Uh, my first guest, critics have called this gentleman, Gan Wilson, the Michelangelo of the macabre, the wizard of the weird, the guru on gruesome. His drawings have appeared in uh, New Yorker, The National Lampoon, Gourmet, Punch, Paris Match, and of course, Playboy. His newest collection is entitled, Is Nothing Sacred, of which I have a copy here. Please welcome now, Mr. Gayan Wilson. Gayan, hello. Have a seat. It's, uh, I, I've been a big fan of yours for many, many years, as have, uh, I guess, the entire nation and folks overseas as well. And I was looking over articles about your life this morning, and something caught my eye that said you had been born... Uh, dead. Dead. You are born dead. Yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's true, uh, David. I was. I was born dead. Um, I, I think it had a lot to do with uh, my career. Um, I came out blue and unbreathing, and uh, the doctors were advising my parents to forget it and start over again and put me to dispose all. But uh, uh, <laughs> uh, uh, the old family doctor came by, dear old guy played by Lionel Barrymore. <laughs> <laughs> he rushed into the operating room and grabbed me, and from somewhere he got a pot of hot water and a pot of iced water, and he would dunk me in the one and then the other, and then he'd hit me, and then he'd do the thing all over again. Mm -hmm. And eventually I started to complain, and I've done it ever since. Yeah. Now, is there anything to, uh, you have, I guess, a peculiar By view. the way, I'm sorry I didn't bring along, if I'd know as Animal Night, my man-eating Tyrannosaurus Rex. <laughs> Does he do anything with the bowling ball? No, uh, <laughs> he might chew it a little bit. Uh, you're also, uh, you have some interesting ancestors. I do, I do. The one I'm proudest of is P.T. Barnum. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think P.T. Barnum is sort of like Hugh M. Hefner. It's uh, America, having run into him, was never the same afterwards. Uh -huh. Uh, he really single-handedly created advertising as we know it today. Uh, a sensational guy, terrific fellow, very proud of him. The other one is William Jennings Bryan, uh, who is perhaps the greatest folk hero of the uh, sort of bucolic set that there ever was. I'm not so proud of him. I, I much prefer P.T. Yeah, go after uh, uh, Do you him. find yourself being attracted to, to circuses and carnivals and so forth? Uh, the sideshow. Yeah. Yeah, usually. I like the sideshow much better. I like the freaks. Um, they're fun. They're, they're nice people. And uh, I used to drag my poor father to the sideshow time after time. He hated sideshows, uh -huh. uh, but I loved them. Uh, they smelled great. You know, you could smell the fire eaters. <laughs> he's sweating away, uh -huh. and the tattooed man. And uh, it was terrific. I just loved them. Do you, uh, you uh, use any of these um, exhibits or memories or people? All the time. As all far the time. As the whole world is grist to a macabre cartoonist's mm -hmm. mill. Uh, there's, uh, you just, there's, there's, I used, I used to rely on uh, the classic uh, monsters, you know, Frank and Dracula, the Gothic novels. Uh -huh. I found out that the daily papers and the television news are a much better source of grotesque uh, subjects of humor. So the, the uh, cartoons we see are actually from real life. They are, yeah. Let me. Uh, do, do you want to take a look at the, some of the cartoons now, or shall we wait? Oh, we'll do the commercial now, then we'll come back and All take a right, look at some fine. examples Super. of Mr. Wilson's work. And uh, you folks will stay with us. Uh, we'll be right back. Uh, welcome back to the show. Uh, Gay and Wilson is with us. Uh, Susie Kurtz from uh, Love, Sydney. And later in the program, Andy Kaufman. We were, uh, let's take a look at some of the cartoons. I guess most of these are from the new publication, Gay, is Yeah, most of them are from, uh, it's nothing sacred. I'll hold them up and you okay. tell us what we're looking at. Uh, this one uh, uh, has a doctor and he's looking at a patient and uh, there's something in the back of the patient uh, <laughs> clutching it. And he says, I think I found the trouble, Mr. Nadler. <laughs> Quick and uh, exact That's right. Sometimes diagnosis. just a simple checkup like no. that will put it you should, uh, Something green on your back, yeah, David. You always want to go to the doctor. That's and right. Looked at. Not uh, always that serious either. Uh, this is a touching thing. This is about a painter who's painted. A painter's no longer there. You wonder why. And then you see that he's painted something else, which he took for a rock. It wasn't a rock, folks. It was something hungry. <laughs> Later attached itself to his back and dragged him and down. Dragged him down. Yeah. Oh, this is wonderful. <clears throat> this one is a great favorite with eye doctors. Um, it shows an ins a fiendish eye doctor with a knife at the ready. 
And a, uh, a patient was beginning to get the idea, and on the wall chart it says in ever-shrinking letters, I am an insane eye doctor, and I am going to kill you now as you sit there reading, and then it sort of fades out. <laughs> I like the way that guy looks. Now, there is a guy, you see, that's a stoop. This well, guy... Well, they, if, if you're just about to be destroyed, people tend to look stupid, yeah. you know? I would guess so. Yes. Especially by an optometrist. Especially by an optometrist. You're just not ready for it with an optometrist. This is a, a, a very nice one, sort of sociological. There's this fellow being strapped into the electric chair, and the uh, hood's about to be put over. The doctor's looking sad. The priest is reading from the book, and uh, <laughs> the guy is happy, and he's saying, gee, it, it, it's just like in the movies. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's realized a part of the American dream, David. <laughs> What a simpleton. That's, uh... <laughs> this, I think the simplicity of this one, I'm proud of that. There, there's a men's washroom in a restaurant, and you've often seen this sign says, employees must wash hands by order of the Board of Health. Yeah. You wondered about it. Well, here's the explanation. You see, the fellow's got these hands, and, they, uh, and he's washing them one after the other. There's logic to everything if washing you just pursue it. This, yeah, this is a, a little thing about legality. Here we have a court composed entirely of lobsters, a lobster judge, a uh, lobster uh, secretary, lobster jury, and uh, <clears throat> the client here has got a little napkin which you wear to a seafood restaurant when you're eating lobster. And the caption says, uh, the lawyer's uh, saying, Your Honor, uh, the defense contends its client could never get a fair trial in his court. <laughs> <laughs> And there's a touching one here. I don't know if you get in the TV monitor, but here, here there's this nice little gentleman, and he's in the uh, uh, pediatric ward, and there's all these little babies. He's waving a green webbed hand, and way over there, waving back, is a little tiny green web. <laughs> Those are wonderful. Do you, Thank are, you very are you, much. Uh, you mentioned you were influ influenced by sideshow freak shows and so on and Absolutely, so forth. Absolutely, yeah. uh, Are you also a monster movie fan? Oh, I have, I'm have. i a nut uh, for it. I, I've dragged my wife into the... They always show these monster movies in the most despicable possible theaters. I don't know why, but you go and it's usually much more appalling than the show. I mean, mm -hmm. many's the time I've heard... <laughs> Worse sounds coming from the auditorium uh, than you know, <laughs> that sort of thing, you know. <laughs> That's kind of stuff, you know. You, you tend to look away from the, the, the werewolf and the guy next to you, you know, because uh, he's a little more menacing, a little more scary. But yes, I, I, I watch them all the time. I'm an absolute uh, buff. You, uh, you also went to, uh, visited uh, a monster capital of the world. I huh? did, yes. I, I, I went. Uh, I, we, my, my wife is a travel, Nancy Winters, a novelist and, and uh, journalist. Uh, she uh, got a thing where we were going on a, a very lovely, uh, healthy uh, uh, cruise in the Mediterranean. And it, it turned out that we were going to pass nearby Yugoslavia, and it occurred to both of us that Romania was nearby, and therein lay Transylvania, the, uh, uh, the home of Count Dracula. So I called uh, Playboy magazine and asked if they would be interested if I did an article on Count Dracula in his home country, and they said yes. So uh, the, uh, the, the government of Romania made us their guest, and I was shown through the place, and it was an incredible experience. I, <clears throat> I, I must confess that I was a little worried because I thought, I'll turn up and it'll look like Skokie, Illinois. <laughs> uh, but uh, it didn't. It looked just like Transylvania. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I will never forget, uh, there's, see, you've got the thing is divided into various areas, and the approach to, to, get, to get into Transylvania, you have to go over the Carpathian Mountains, which are those mountains that you see in the Bela Lugosi mm -hmm. movies, you know, these terrifying looking things. So we, we, we went up and then we had, the, the government had a, a chauffeur who was a sort of an Eon Fleming persuasion. Mm -hmm. go, he'd go as fast as he possibly could without killing you, you know, <laughs> on any given road. And so we, we were going up the, the mountain and the Romanians have got this sort of mess of uh, ecological sympathy and mysticism. And when they do a road for the first time, they do not actually, they sort of sketch it, you know, they kind of roughly bulldoze it mm -hmm. and let us stand back and see what the mountain's going to do. And if the mountain rejects part of the road, well, okay, they try it over this way mm -hmm. instead. 
And uh, this road had been essentially rejected. It was a flop as far as the mountain was concerned. And uh, we kept turning like this, avoiding crevices and things. And it got higher and higher. And um, the sheep were standing like this. And uh, <laughs> finally, at the very top, uh, the clouds kept pouring in from all sides. It was really like you know some speed up action thing, special effects. And they, we, we were to go through a tunnel, which was just, just then had been carved to the very top of the Bagarish Pass. And uh, we're just about to the entrance when I heard this noise, and I looked back, and there was this lightning bolt not coming down, but this way, you know, at us. Big, fat, yellow thing, just like that. And I went, spat like that, right by the entrance to the cave. And little chips of uh, rock hit the, uh, then we went in the tunnel, and there was an old lady in a shawl with a lantern underneath, and she was going, I don't know what she, you know, some kind of thing. And we went, we entered, we came out, and we were in a storm, a terrific flashing light, and so we could not see out of the window because there was just water, you know, just currents of water. And then a lightning go like that, and you see a jagged rock. And uh, the, the driver, of course, did not slow down. He kept mm -hmm. on going as fast as he could and uh, into this blinding thing. And, and my wa uh, Nancy, uh, my wife, was, was sitting there, and she was doing a repertorial thing of, of writing things down. I thought she was taking notes, but she handed me this bit of paper saying, why am I here? <laughs> <laughs> and I, I wrote with a burst of male chauvinism, I wrote, because you love me. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, that did not, that did not that work. Didn't work. And uh, then we ran into a landslide. The car suddenly went down and rocks hit the top of it. And Pretty authentic place, It was huh? really something yeah. else. And, uh, but this guy recovered us. And then as we approached this lovely little inn down the, uh, the other side of the hill, uh, like, again, special effects, the rain stops. And there's sort of the drippy, wet air. And we emerge to have a vodka, please, at, the, at this uh -huh. charming little inn. And there's this huge white butterfly flopping through the air like this. And our guide from the uh, 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 Romanian uh, uh, tourist thing looked at it and he says, Aha! <laughs> I see Dracula has taken the form of a gigantic white butterfly to welcome you to yeah. Trantulé. <laughs> <laughs> it actually it happened. This sounds more like Disney World. Gillian Wilson, thank you very much for being here, sir. I appreciate it. Uh, we'll be right back. Swooshy Kurtz will be joining us.